Ideas and really get a good dialogue going. This worked very effectively a month and a half ago in the North End, and we hope that it will be successful here as well. Um, this is to just bring us back in comparison. We're going to show all sorts of images of the Greenway and so on, but the, um, and, and I think that the charge to the Conservancy is to make the park a wonderful place, um, you know, better tomorrow than it is today. Um, but it's also, it's so much better today than it was many years ago. And um, increasingly that's distant and, and we don't remember. But I mean, that's the, that's the most dramatic comparison. Um, and now, you know, sort of a, a similar spot um, uh, with the tables, chairs, and umbrellas that in conjunction with the, with the community, um, we were able to put out there. Um, you know, we are, um, it actually feels really like the, the Grooming and the Conservancy are on a roll lately. Just wanted to mention a couple of things that have all happened in the last month. Um, first of all, the, the mayor um, awarded the Conservancy um, for our organic and sustainability practices. You'll hear a bit more about those from Stu, but we were delighted to receive that award. Actually, on your way in, you may have seen the giant banner downstairs. The Atlantic Wharf Development also won a Greenovate Award for being um, a LEED certified building. Um, we were delighted to receive an award as well, so very proud of that. Second thing was we received national recognition this month, uh, well, in, in May, for uh, from the City Parks Alliance um, as a frontline park. And a real recognition, not just of the efforts of the Conservancy, but really of the efforts of the community to build the Greenway out of the Central Audrey Tunnel project. Um, and then a, um, uh, a third recognition is the, the organization Great Nonprofits um, that collects reviews of um, nonprofit organizations, recognize the Conservancy as one of the top rated environmental organizations in the country. Um, and that is, those reviews are written by volunteers and users and so on. Um, and so we were, we're delighted at the positive feedback there. Um, and if you, if you have written a review there, thank you. If you've not written a review there, you, it's one more forum to express your opinions about how the Conservancy is doing. Um, uh, we love five stars, but you know, we, we want your honest feedback. Uh, and so with that, um, why don't I um, allow the, the fabulous staff at the Conservancy to talk about um, our efforts. So we'll have, you will hear from five people, um, and then we will move into breakouts. Um, first up is Bob Stigberg, who is the Superintendent of Maintenance and Security. Um, there's a picture. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Bob Stigberg. I'm, the, as Jesse said, the superintendent for maintenance and security. Um, so the maintenance department, I just want to brief you a little bit about what we do. Uh, you know, I don't, I've never met you all, you've never met me. I'm sure you've seen me or my staff out there doing some work, but I just want to kind of give you a brief overview of that. So um, we maintain all the hardscape elements of the Greenway to include the water features, the lights and electrical, um, Furnishings, site furnishings, vertical masonry, as well as pavements. Uh, we, we also oversee litter and trash collection, rodent and pest control. To the best of our ability, we enforce the park rules and guidelines. Uh, I have a staff of three in addition to myself. Um, and I'm looking. Um, I'd like to discuss what the maintenance department has been up to over the last few months and what we will be focusing our attention on this summer. Um, but first, I just want to give you, again, a brief overview. Each day, with the help of our subcontractor Work Inc., uh, we pick up and empty, we pick up litter, empty trash and recycling barrels multiple times a day. We unlike, unlock and wipe down about 60 tables and chairs, or 60 tables, 200 chairs, 30 umbrellas each day. Um, at the end of the day, everything is secured for the night. Uh, fountain maintenance, we maintain uh, four fountains and one other water feature in the Greenway, including the Rings Fountain and the Harbor Fog in the Wharf District. These five water features require two staff members about a half day, Monday through Friday, um, to maintain. We perform masonry repairs, including replacing failed mortar and joints, resealing of expansion joints, uh, resetting loose pavers, replace broken pavers. Um, we power wash pavements and walls um, up and down the greenway pretty much every day throughout the summer. It's uh, an ongoing task that, we, uh, that we're always doing. Um, we monitor food vendors. We do our best to enforce park rules and regulations and uh, work with the Boston Police Department when we see illegal activities. Um, 
seasonally, we, we start and shut down the five water features. We remove snow and ice as needed, install and remove winter lights, install and remove pieces of art, install and maintain drainage as needed. Um, between the in-house maintenance staff and Work Inc., we maintain a presence on the Greenway 365 days a year from 7 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Um, so now I'd like to kind of go through the slides and talk a little more specifically about what we've been doing. Um, the first slide, as you see, is a recycling barrel. Um, last summer we implemented a recycling pilot program. We installed six recycling barrels throughout the Greenway using single stream recycling. Uh, this has proven to be very successful, mostly reducing the amount of trash volume that we are picking up and throwing away. We plan to expand this program, adding more recycling barrels throughout the Greenway. Uh, um, <coughs> skateboarders are an ongoing uh, issue that we face all the time. I'm sure most of you are probably aware of it. Um, they've done a fair amount of damage to some of the masonry out there. We have, over the last <coughs> two and a half years, installed over 200 skate deterrents in the masonry, and that's just in the North District and in the North End. Um, and what those are, they're pieces of stainless steel that go on the joints of the masonry, and that pretty much stops them. Wherever we put them, they no longer are a problem, but we have more to go. And over the next, uh, I'm going to say, year or two, we want to get all the spots where they are have moved on to and are likely to hit. Um, winter lights. <coughs> the uh, maintenance department, working with our public programs uh, department, um, we fabricate and install several winter light installations throughout the Greenway. This past winter, we wrapped light poles uh, with lights in the Urban Arboretum, cafe lights across from Rose Wharf, moon lights across from the aquarium, and assisted with uh, the interactive light blades installation called Color Commons. Light blades. Uh, we are currently evaluating the condition of the light blade fixtures and the controller that activates them. We've experienced uh, some problems with them. Um, we had a, a consultant in last week, um, and he's uh, basically he's told us that there are probably six fixtures that need to be either repaired or replaced. And we've already known that the controller is a little uh, well, needs a little work. The software needs to be updated. So um, we're going to be doing that in the next uh, several weeks to get those 100 percent up and running. We recently uh, concluded an overhaul of the Rings Fountain Basin equipment. Uh, you may have seen the temporary fence that was on site during March and April. Um, <clears throat> after five years of operation, we knew that uh, some of the equipment was in disrepair um, and it needed a good cleaning as well. So uh, in order to perform those repairs, we had to remove over 300 granite pavers and 120 concrete blocks. Total weight of all those, uh, that material was uh, about 100,000 pounds. Um, so we rebuilt all 60 shooters. You can see those in the upper right-hand corner. Those, uh, those are some of the shooters that we rebuilt, the solenoid valves, I should say. Um, we replaced about 750 feet of uh, pneumatic hose. Um, and we replaced, uh, there are about 150 lights in total in the ring stop. We replaced a few of them that, that could not be repaired. Uh, we re-lamped re several others. And we did almost all of this work in-house uh, with Conservancy staff, uh, saving considerable money in doing so. The end result of this work, in addition to a, or a more reliable and cleaner fountain, is that we now have a greater uh, level of confidence maintaining it. We were already feeling pretty good about it, but um, having basically gone through every part in that basin and uh, rebuilding it or replacing it, um, we now just feel 100% comfortable working on that. So. Uh, in conclusion, I hope I have succeeded in giving you some insight into some of the many daily seasonal and special events tasks the maintenance department works on throughout the year. I look forward to answering any questions uh, you may have about maintaining the Greenway hardscape and hearing any suggestions or ideas you may have on how we can maintain it more effectively. So, thank you. And um, we also look forward to a summer full of days of uh, enjoyment of the Rings Fountain. Thanks. And Stu is next. I want to introduce Thank you for the, the time this evening. It's nice to see some familiar faces out there who are uh, very responsible for uh, some of the images that uh, you're going to be seeing up here on the screen and everything. Um, my name is Stu Schilber, Superintendent of Horticulture for the Greenway Conservancy. Um, 
going to give you just a little walk through the wharf, um, some of the horticulture that's going on that hopefully you guys have uh, had the time to uh, personally experience and enjoy for yourselves. Um, show you a little bit of uh, what we've accomplished in the last 12 months, um, things that are ongoing, and uh, things that we hope to uh, be able to introduce in the, uh, in the future. Um, organics, uh, they are the foundation to our whole uh, land care program with the Greenway Conservancy. Um, we are 100% organically maintained up and down the Greenway everywhere, including the work district. Um, we employ the use of a box full of worms to help us do this, and that's the practice of vermiculture. And you'll see a footlocker there that contains probably a colony of uh, 10 to 15,000 uh, special little red wiggler worms that break down food and uh, uh, vegetable waste. And the byproduct that they uh, that they create is extremely nutrient rich, and it's just one of the ingredients that goes into the brewing of compost tea. You can see an image in the middle where uh, those are some of our brewers that are set up. Um, we have four. Uh, 50 gallon brewers that we brew that we are brewing every single day so we're doing about 200 gallons uh, every day we figure um, we're able to do that four to five days a week um, eight, 800 to a thousand gallons over the course of the year um, we put out 13,000 gallons of compost tea last year on the greenway which is uh, great for the plants um, our soil tests are telling us that things are improving dramatically as we add uh, um, you know, biological diversity to the uh, soils um, you can see in the last image that the uh, end result there, it's uh, actually being applied, um, I think in that uh, image there, through deep root injection into some of the plant material. Um, we've even you know, tried to uh, message this properly to everybody too with the uh, use of uh, signs and, and bumper stickers that you can see your parks, the Greenway Organic Lawn Plant, plant Care. Um, this is our sprayer that we have, a 100 gallon sprayer. Um, tea is brewed. In, uh, in the brewers that you saw in the earlier image that's pumped into the, into the tank here and travels out onto the Greenway. Um, Eric Di Tommaso, our plant health care technician, is responsible for uh, most of the applications and we're able to, uh, with this um, vehicle, get uh, everywhere on the Greenway by use of the hose. We get to all our trees. Uh, we do an uh, injection for our trees three times a year. All the trees on the Greenway, that's close to 700 trees. All our lawns get an application twice a year of compost tea, and all our beds get an uh, application three times a year. So it's uh, it's really um, a big part of what we what we do. Um, another part of uh, lawn care, and particularly important to the Wharf District, with those really high-profile, nice little uh, lawns that we have, um, is both means uh, mechanically and good old uh, old-fashioned human power. There, um, we have a, a small tractor that we aerate all our lawns uh, twice a year, um, spring, and, spring and fall. Um, we will do aerations periodically after, uh, after events where we've uh, experienced some usage and we want to just alleviate any possible compaction. We use the uh, tractor. It's a towing uh, aerator implement behind the tractor. And then uh, we have an image of one of our staff uh, spreading organic fertilizer, another one of the products that we put down in addition to Humates and we do it compost top dressing to all the lawns in the spring. Um, everything, again, 100% organic. Irrigation, another big part of uh, caring for the lawns that, uh, that we um, have in the Wharf District. And it's not just uh, irrigations for the lawns, but also irrigations for the landscape. Um, so we're constantly doing repair. Um, we feel terrible for uh, uh, Gary Thorpe, our irrigation technician, um, charged with a, with a difficult job. Typically, you you know, fix irrigation one day and you walk away and you come back the next morning and somewhere else a leak is sprung, sprung up, so it's, uh, it's inevitable. But I uh, have some images here of uh, irrigation running on the lawns and, uh, and just some of the repair work that we do on a daily basis. And volunteers, um, I think we might have a few in the crowd this evening who have uh, definitely given much of their time to, uh, to help us care for um, plants and lawns and, and, uh, and all the hardscape that we have in the district um, can't do it without our volunteers it's truly a uh, it's a sign of a healthy park is a good volunteer program um, we've gone from uh, ground ground floor three years ago um, and it's 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 grown each and every year um, our numbers of total volunteers is growing um, the hours that people put in is, uh, is countless um, we can't do it without the help of volunteers works extremely appreciative our individual volunteer program is expanded now into corporate programs. Um, so basically from March 
through to uh, almost mid-December, every other week. We're either doing a corporate project or a regular project. Um, and we host school groups. Um, we do all sorts of things. Um, and we got to the point where I say we do, we were always going to just do one a week because that sort of fit our bandwidth. But tomorrow, for example, we're doing three projects in one day. So we've got uh, about 12 people coming from uh, Mercer. We've got uh, 12 folks coming through another volunteer organization, Boston Cares. And then we have our regular volunteers coming out to join us tomorrow who will be um, and if I can say, I hope that uh, uh, we'll be planting tomorrow. Um, I think you'll find that to be interesting. If you're able to join us, that would be great. Um, one of the things that uh, we've hosted uh, focus groups now with our regular volunteers uh, periodically throughout the year where it's just an extra little uh, few minutes to um, have a cup of coffee and we ask some questions and we get some great feedback from our volunteers. And one of the things that they said was, we love pulling weeds, but we want to put some more plants in the ground as well, so we're trying to uh, offer that opportunity tomorrow, right around the Harbor Fog uh, lights we'll be planting. Um, some of the uh, some of the popular plants and places that you've come to know on the on the Greenway, the Birch Islands. Um, here we've got uh, you know plantings along Atlantic Avenue. Um, we've got some uh, beds around Harbor Fog. Um, I threw in the image of a very interesting plant in the bottom left corner, the Apuntia. Um, it's a native cactus, uh, native to Massachusetts. Um, people don't uh, often realize that. It was actually brought to us by way of a former staff person from Polly Hill Arboretum out in Martha's Vineyard. We propagated it. It's growing successfully here on the, uh, in the Wharf District. We're very proud of that. It um, meets the criteria of our plants uh, in the Where Wharf. Is that? that is uh, adjacent to the Harbor Fog. Or anything. So I'll, uh, you'll have to look for it and see yeah. if you can find it. It's, uh, it's right off the main path and it's uh, spreading and and, and doing very well, but um, all the plants along Atlantic Avenue uh, in the North District um, are native to northeastern United States. Um, it's the collection of plants that we inherited when the Greenway was first designed and built, and we've been able to uh, maintain that and continue planting more species of native plants, so we're very proud of that. Um, it's a great collection. Um, not just plants in the ground, plants in containers. Hopefully you've uh, seen some of the container plantings that have been done up and down the Greenway. Um, we have about 60 uh, containers. Um, I think it's a great indicator of a, of a healthy park, not just containers that are planted um, you know, with marigolds and impatiens in the spring and then left to go till Columbus Day, but um, containers that change every season. And we have a person on staff who's responsible for the design um, of these, and you can see you know, bulbs in the spring, um, flowering plants in the, uh, in the summertime, we get some fall color out of our design, in the, uh, and then of course we go all the way to winter time. Um, even thinking that that's an important season to, to have something nice to look at as well. Um, parcel 15, um, the eastern bed uh, adjacent to the Rings Fountain. Um, if we remember what it looked like on the image on the left, um, a little over uh, 13, 14 months ago, um, went through. We did a renovation, including uh, a design uh, that we. Developed partnering with uh, Pat Kalina, formerly of the High Line um, Park in New York City. He's uh, doing his own design work now, and we thought that was a great uh, partnership to work with him. Um, we've introduced uh, spring color, summer color, fall color, winter interest to uh, Parcel 15 now, um, staying native with all the plantings. Um, we were able to hopefully increase the screening along the uh, Atlantic Avenue with some of the plantings, the density, color four seasons of interest and everything. So we feel like that was a was a big success. Um, hopefully you guys have had the uh, time to enjoy it, one of these seasons at least. Um, we'd like to uh, work with that again. I apologize, that image isn't, uh, isn't showing so great, but parcel 14, um, again on the east side, next to the Harbor Island uh, Pavilion. Um, a, a very strong and uh, um, robust planting of, of woody plant material was put in there when the Harbor Island uh, Pavilion went in. Again, they're all native, and it's great. We've got beautiful fall color. What we felt like we'd like to introduce is, uh, with Pat's help is the herbaceous layer. And those are your grasses and your flowering perennials. Um, so some of the popular asters that you see in the fall and, and the grasses, the great uh, fall color and early spring bulbs and everything. So um, I do apologize, but the, the color represented around the border of the, uh, of the bed is all the uh, um, introductions that we'll be doing in the next couple of weeks of, this, of these grasses and other um, flowering plants. Parcel 14. Um, parcel 17, uh, to the southern end of Parcel 17, trying to show in this overhead image um, with a close-up there. 
Um, that's the area closest to the uh, open plaza where we've introduced tables and chairs. Kind of feeling like that uh, that area needed some help, and uh, we could it could be a better than it is. So we we've, we've started an effort. Um, the first two images show you that it's it's empty in one spot, and then you go 15 feet up the path on the right hand side. And though it's very lush and dense, it didn't have the variety um, or the textural interest that we wanted. We thought we could do better. So um, through the help of our own staff and our um, our youth program and through the assistance of subcontractors. Sub uh, we've already started the dismantling of the bed. Um, we apologize for the, the appearance, but improvements are coming soon. Um, our efforts so far have been to salvage all the plants that are, that are in there. Um, we've got a great uh, track record going anywhere where uh, work is being done on the Greenway. Um, the board staff is able to get in, pull out all the plants. Uh, we salvage everything all the way up to the trees. Um, we've moved probably close to 40 trees in the last two years on the Greenway successfully to new locations rather than uh, bulldoze them under. Um, we feel like that's a real big win. So we've uh, gone in and salvaged all the plants that we could, and we hope that uh, in the next uh, week or so that you guys are seeing new plants going in, and it'll be a much uh, more full, exciting, again, this is um, Pat's design, four seasons of interest, uh, screening from the street, lots of color, um, interest and everything. So you know some of the familiar plants that he uses, the magnolias and the dogwoods, and Great fall color and summer flowering plants and everything. So, should be very exciting. We're looking forward to that. And uh, that brings us up to uh, Charlie, or perhaps not Charlie, but maybe Jesse, speaking about public programs. Thank you. Thanks, Stu. Um, uh, Charlie is actually with your Simons um, at uh, at their meeting, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pinch hit for him. I think he probably will be here shortly. Um, and therefore able to take questions. But um, uh, we, this is an image from the, um, the Greenway Open Market that occurs every Saturday. Um, and I think we worked closely with the Wharf District Council ahead of putting that out as a pilot and then took feedback. And I think it's a good example of the type of things that you know live up to the, the desire in the design um, to have this kind of activation in the park. Um, and draw this many people and do it and revise it um, and work together with the community to, to have a, a really successful event that now we hear from surrounding businesses. Um, you know, the, the E. Mac and Bolio, for example, has talked about how this weekly Saturday event has helped their ice cream business, right? I mean, it's um, despite the introduction of food vending and other things, this is helping drive um, traffic to downtown, which is, I think, what everybody uh, was hoping. Um, Looking just narrowly on the Greenway, this is a slide that you may have seen before. This is um, attendance at um, Conservancy-sponsored um, events. Um, so there are millions of people that come to enjoy the gardens or enjoy the fountains. Um, for the um, events that we put on, for the rental carousel that has been out, um, the Wi-Fi system that um, we installed, and um, the food vending program, this is what has happened to attendance. And I really think that um, Thank you to Charlie, thank you to um, the, the program staff. 350 free events on the Greenway each year, um, and no one is talking about the empty way anymore. Um, you know, that is, that is a thing of the past. Um, the Greenway Mobile Leads program is, I mean, if you look at the numbers on attendance, um, it is a, it's a big component of what has brought people out to the park. Um, uh, as Nancy Brennan used to say, um, the way to someone's heart is through their stomach. Um, uh, here's Charlie. Um, it's all right. Um, I, I, I suggested that you could uh, that you could take questions. Um, you want me to hand off straight to you here? Yeah. Um, let me allow you to catch your breath. All right. Um, so um, it has been very successful. Again, we have um, through sort of ongoing dialogue with the with the Wharf District um, looked at locations, looked at um, you know, where this has been more and less successful. Um, it is, in addition to extremely popular, also an important source of earned income for the Conservancy. Um, this, our fourth year, um, in the first year, it made us $26,000. It is now worth tenfold what it was four years later. So it's over $250,000 in this year. And so um, we think it's you know wonderful to, for the public and people are, are voting with their feet. It's also um, great because it helps support 
the 350 free events that occur. Um, here are a selection of the, the events in 2013 that we anticipate uh, occurring in the Wharf District. Um, fitness classes, the open market, um, we again will have the Berkeley Concert Series, um, the Figment Weekend um, is coming back, that has been enormously popular. Again, an example of the first year that we did it, there were some issues. Um, there was, uh, the, the concert that occurred was really loud, and we heard you loud and clear on that topic, and so the, the stage in the second year was not right outside of Harbor Towers. Um, it was instead at Dewey Square. So, you know, evenings like tonight are an attempt to hear that kind of feedback on what's working and what isn't so that we can adapt the things um, so that it's uh, successful for everyone. Um, we also, of course, are opening the carousel um, Labor Day weekend. Linda will talk more about that in a little bit, but we're planning um, the opening events and a community day and winter lights around this fabulous edition. Um, and the winter lights, um, for example, we have begun conversations with um, Joanne and others about the possibility of doing, you know, something joint when the um, when Christopher Columbus is turning on the um, fantastic lighting. Um, that it's right across the street from the carousel, and is there a joint winter lighting event that could be held? Um, we'd love your feedback. Um, we'd love your ideas. The the model that um, that Charlie is leading is. Uh, for the Greenway as a platform, for the ideas that are brought to us. Um, so we, the way that we have been able to scale up the number of events is by serving as a facilitator, by helping people that have a great idea put it on in a great space. Um, we help with the permitting, we help with the logistics, um, and um, it means that we have a lot of successful people that want to come back the next year. Um, your ideas for events, I would love to see this on the Greenway. We are generally not um, putting on events anymore, but that your feedback helps us when somebody brings, us an idea, brings forward an idea, know whether this is a good fit, a good fit for the, you know, a good fit for the Greenway, a good fit for the Wharf District. Um, so we'd love to, love to hear your ideas. Um, with that, sorry, Charlie, I, I stole your thunder, but you'll be able to talk to Charlie. Uh, but, uh, let me hand off to um, Linda Jonish, the director Harborside, Mother's Walk side, and so there's two kinds of circulations going 
quarter one study we did about uh, shape and the sun and opportunities to uh, provide more amenities for users. This is the Rings Fountain area. It's just a sketch showing, you know, in some cases doing something sort of light touch like global movable uh, umbrellas is effective. In other areas, maybe thinking big, thinking big makes big money that needs to be raised, but um, it's also, you know, understanding the working with the owners and the butters and residents and users, what are the, where are the big gestures that maybe are worthwhile making and um, thinking through that? This is just was one idea. Um, so it's just to show the big one, that's the point of big money to get to, to this. Um, and now I'd like to turn over to my colleague. And I'd love to, part of my little group is, is to hear about your ideas and feedback about um, useless activity and that was actually a, a great segue uh, I'm Jody Wollen I'm the director of development here at the Conservancy I've had the great pleasure of working with many of you on different fundraising initiatives um, and it really is very important for the Conservancy that we work and we partner with all of you right now um, over 50% of the funding for the Greenway comes through philanthropic revenue and earn revenue and all of the improvements that you've seen have really come from philanthropy and it's very important um, for us to continue to raise money to continue to make improvements and to work with all of you um, so I'm also in the interest of keeping us on time I'm going to be very very brief um, so just wanted to start off with a few different ways in which um, you know, you can work with us and donate uh, funds to the Conservancy uh, in the work district. So the Mother's Walk, I think probably most of you are familiar with. Um, this is um, a paver program where you can purchase a paver in honor of your loved one. It doesn't need to be a mother. We have actually um, pavers that have been purchased in honor of some dogs and some grandfathers and, and just the whole gamut. So um, we have the, the paper program for $500 where you can purchase, and it will be in the Worth District Parks. Uh, we launched a membership program this year. Uh, many of you were part of the focus groups that we did, and um, you can become a member. Uh, memberships start at $60 and go all the way to $5,000 with different benefits. Uh, we would welcome um, any ideas you have and, and of course um, welcome your membership um, here are the levels we've got um, again different benefits for um, different levels and I've also brought some um, information with me tonight if you're interested I can give it to you to take with you um, and we need your support so this slide is an example of some improvements that we would like to make and we would love to work with all of you. Um, I feel really fortunate in you know, working on the Greenway it gives me a chance to work with all of you to really improve our city and leave a legacy in Boston that we can all be really proud of and I, I feel really grateful for that. So, um, you know, there's a variety of ways in which you can make a donation to support these programs. You know, no, do no donation is too small or too large and I would be thrilled to, to talk with all of you. Um, so these are, you know, different improvements that we're looking at making and um, many of which are, are fundraising dependent. And so I have my business cards with me, feel free to grab me after, um, but would love to, to talk with any of you um, if this piques your interest. And uh, with that, I think we'll move right into our breakout session. Do we have specific areas where? Let me, let me do a, a, a quick just wrap, which is to say, um, we've talked a lot. We want to hear from you, um, and we will break out. Um, you know, running to, to draw some themes across across um, all the different people you heard from. You know, we try to be um, we try to be very cost conscious. Um, so, for example, Bob talked about um, doing the ring fountain repairs um, with our own staff. And um, the organic program, we did a study with the Harvard Kennedy School that showed that um, an organic approach was uh, more cost effective than a non-organic approach. Um, when you know, uh, the, the programs department, um, the model of hosting rather than producing events. Um, and 
we try, you know, the, the improvements that, that Stu was talking about, you know, trying to use uh, small money to fix places that are um, failing where plants have died. But then also, um, it is critical, as Jody says, for us to raise the philanthropic support that enables initiatives like additional um, upgrades to horticultural beds, or the Carousel Project, or we've not talked about public art, but you know that is that's a, an initiative we're working on. And so, um, we appreciate your support. We appreciate your ideas, and so why don't we hear them? Um, the, we'll have four groups, several of us, uh, Jody, myself, Amy will be floating um, among groups. Uh, Charlie, do you want to take, um, I don't know, that, that corner um, for programs? Um, Bob and Stu, you want to be here? And um, Linda in the, in the back corner there? Um, please, we'd, uh, with that, I think you know, in about 30, minutes, we will come back together and um, each of the, the people in the corners will talk about what they heard. Um, and we will also capture all of that in a document that we will um, share with um, the Wharf District Council and put up on, on our website. So we look forward to hearing your input. Thanks. I'm going to summarize this um, for distribution on paper. Thanks. Uh, the first uh, item that was brought up in my group was um, Harbor Fog, which is sort of a sculptural interactive element that we have, um, and wondering if it is fully operational. Uh, so that's something I will look into to make sure it is, and if it is not, I'll have the uh, designer of it come in and, and solve that problem. Uh, second thing was... Well, we have a, an idea of something that's supposed to be doing the... He was wondering that if well, he didn't think it was as interactive as it should be. That yeah, I was involved with it originally with the thing, but to be honest, when he was setting it up, and it was much more obviously interactive. As you approached it, things happened. The lights the lights started to flash and change colors. You heard the, the hover sounds, which uh, I understand were working once earlier this year, but I hadn't heard them. They, they actually, they still do work, but I, my understanding from Ross Miller, the artist, is that it was, we was getting complaints it was too loud, so we, it is something adjustable. Well, so it can't be. Very quiet now. It was, it was clear when you came that the fog was, it was all related to you, and all of a sudden the fog came, so it caused you to sort of stop and pause, and. Uh, and it, he had a lot of trouble with it initially, and I was out there with him a number of times, but it was working for a short period of time, and, that, you know, and it really caught everybody's eye. Now people go by, and they you know, they don't really realize that it's reacting to them at all. And the lights, the lighting is nothing like what no, it's not right. all working. No one isn't working at all. So I think the answer then, the consultant and group that we're using for the light lights, is actually the same um, person who worked with Ross Miller on Harbor Fall. So we have him engaged, um, we can have him look at it, and if there are adjustments to be made or corrections to be made. Are you going to keep the texting to change the lights? The light lights? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we are, that's not my decision, but not forever. We have the technology. It, it, it is, is not on no. right now. It was a it was a certain period of time um, that you can no longer text them, but it was quite popular, and um, so yeah, as we say, it's, it, it could be brought back. Yeah. Uh, second item was uh, snow removal, and um, uh, it was mentioned that since we do that we do a, a, a fine job on the greenway. And we go across the streets and clear the handicap ramps on those outboard sidewalks. Um, there is a that is outside of our, our leased area. There will be liability liability issues that we have to address and think about. So for now it's on the table at least. And we'll look at that. So I just want to supplement that again because my conversation. If people it's well let's take an example of road walk. So you do a marvelous job in the middle. And Rose Wharf does a good job. So people walk off of Rose Wharf, go across, and then they find when they get to the corner of Broad Street, they're, they're stuck in a road with traffic going by because they're, 
you, you have, have, have made a gateway to nowhere. And it's very unfortunate because if you could get over the liability question, your guys, while they're walking, they're two-thirds of the way across the street anyway before they turn around. And it would be a tremendous service to a few maybe key, key areas. But as it is now, except for the fact that you're setting a beautiful example, it's actually, uh, it's actually worse than if you didn't do it because, because people don't realize that when they get to the other side that they can't do it. So I'd be glad to work with you with it. If you wanted to see if there's a way in which we could coordinate what's going on. Call Bob in advance and tell him where you're going, and we'll just tell him where we're going. <laughs> the cloud take it all the way. <laughs> because you do a terrific job. I mean, it's, it's amazing. amazing how nice. Thank you. Um, enforce the no bikes on the Greenway uh, rules. That, that is against uh, Greenway rules. We do have it posted on signs. Um, it is. It has been obviously very challenging for us to uh, to enforce it effectively. We did think that once the uh, bike lanes were installed in the roads, that would help. But coincidentally, at about the same time, Upway came in and really, I think, increased the amount of bikes on the Greenway. So it's a uh, discussion we've had uh, many times, and um, you know, I think we're, we're just trying to figure out exactly what we can or should do. Well, there are no signs that tell bikes they're not allowed. There are signs. No, that they're you not can't see them on a bike. <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. So yeah. we are looking into getting bigger signs dedicated to that issue. You know, at the same time, we don't want to have big signs polluting the aesthetics of the greenway. Yeah, or you've got to tell people they're not supposed to do but it. But that might be one that, you know, it, it fuels us to try. So. It doesn't have to be a negative sign, either. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's got to be done basically. Um, that's what you're um, and then homeless, uh, obviously, is an issue. And believe me, I, I talk with the Boston Police Department all uh, frequently about it. Not only just calling 911, but I meet with Sergeant Lima regularly about it. Um, it's a big and very complicated issue. Uh, we do try to move them along. Uh, we, if we see them doing anything illegal, whether it's alcohol consumption or drug use or creating a disturbance, we do call 911. Um, we're going to continue to work on it. I uh, recently sent an email to all of my staff to make sure that you call 911 and get the name of the person that answers the phone on the other end. Follow up with Sergeant Lima that I made this call. Does he has come back to me at times and said, I, We have no record of your call. So we need to figure out who's taking my call and then not doing anything about it, not recording it. So for now, that's, that's what we're doing. And I encourage any of you to call 911 too. I think the more times 911 is called and you have records of what those calls being made, hopefully that will have an impact. Joanna Higgins Ryan were here, she would be jumping into underlining yet again. So. so the two folks that had uh, joined me have, have moved on, so I apologize if I'm speaking to those who weren't as interested in the horticulture now. Um, I'll. Uh, I'll try to be brief, but please feel free to jump in at any time with questions or anything. Um, we had an interesting conversation. It was very, uh, it was very distinct in, in two main areas. Um, it started off uh, the first half of the conversation was all about the trees, uh, which I was very excited to talk about. Um, and then it moved to another way that trees and plants are affected by this uh, recurrent theme of, of homelessness in the park and the impact on that. Um, but some of the fun stuff that we talked about. Um, with trees, you know, good questions that were asked. Um, do you see, uh, you know, any any evidence of uh, damage from, you know, south uh, from the proximity to the ocean or anything? Um, and uh, and we don't actually, surprisingly enough. I think that the um, the commercial and residential buildings do provide us a buffer, even though we're this close to the water. Um, we are removed. Um, in fact, but what we're not removed from is the um, effects of the wind. Uh, we do see some wind shear on some of our plantings um, in some of the areas. So. Um, that's that's one problem that we have, um, but we also talked about you know, all of the urban stresses that uh, that affect trees. Um, you know, there's uh, urban pollution is a big one. Um, a lot of the street trees, obviously, being right on the street, proximity to um, vehicular traffic and everything, um, is something that I'm not sure that uh, we actually have a, a serious problem with that. But um, 
with all of these things, you know, compounding on on the trees in an urban environment to help certainly a tree here in the city, as in any city, is going to have a longer uh, life expectancy, excuse me, shorter life expectancy than the, the trees would be um, in more rural areas. So um, we take tissue samples of trees. Uh, we're looking at trees um, that uh, are underperforming and sampling those. Uh, we send off samples I mentioned to uh, UMass as a great testing facility. Um, very local, um, very uh, relatively inexpensive to get a sample off to them and get good results back saying what some of the problems are. There's more uh, there's other private laboratories that um, just in this last week we've sent off probably uh, you know, a couple of, uh, two dozen samples um, that we uh, have starting to get some reports back on and, and should have more. And some of it is just to um, tell us where something is, is doing well and we want to understand that just as much as we want to learn from what might not be um, performing well. Um, the question was raised, what are the uh, what are the green bags that are on these trees that I'm seeing all over the place? And that was a great question. Um, and I explained that uh, when you see green bags on trees, uh, two main things are, are going on. It's either a tree that, um, or uh, I shouldn't just say trees because we have some, some large shrubs that also uh, receive these different bag devices. Uh, most of them are green. Uh, you can see them at the base on the trunks. But they are there for newly installed plant material. Um, plants that have gone in the spring. Um, and when I say newly installed, they might have been transplanted from another area, but they've recently gone in the ground or been moved. And then the other ones that, um, that we have bagged are, <coughs> excuse me, are um, ones that we do have our eye on, um, that we're a little concerned with, the, with their health. And these bags um, are basically, you zip them up around the tree, uh, they have a hole, they create a sort of a donut around the tree, they're a very small little leaf hole system. Um, if you've ever tried to water a tree or plant before, and, you want to give it a big drink of water, but then the water starts to run off, and you got to, you know, wait and go back. And do it. This gets 30 gallons of, uh, of water to the tree in the bag that slowly drains out. Um, and the other neat thing is that we're putting um, basically a uh, shot in the arm, a vitamin pack of organic um, bionutrient, uh, biostimulant, root promoting type of um, material into these, into these bags. We also add our compost tea. So when you do see a bag, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just an extra level of, of care that we're giving um, newly planted, newly transplanted, or some, or, or some uh, trees that um, are having a little uh, an issue and we want to try to bring them, bring them along. And we are seeing great results. Um, Four Point Channel, uh, the west side of Four Point Channel, um, is, a, is an area where the, uh, um, the positive results have been extremely dramatic across the fire station. Um, saw those trees three years ago, spindly, um, they were underperforming, they didn't look happy. Um, the amount of growth that they put on as a result of, of getting uh, these bags, this ICU um, program, for lack of something that we just coined ourselves, tree ICU. Um, so that's what we're doing with those with the bags. And the um, question came up, you know, fruit trees on the Greenway? And I said, no, not really. Um, probably originally designed that way um, because of, you know, fruit production is not something that is very appealing to some, but not to others in an urban environment, sidewalks and a lot of pedestrians. Traffic um, might be a little messy. Um, you know, you get the rotten fruit on, on sidewalks, and you know, when it starts to ferment, the bees and stuff like that. So probably not the best idea in certain landscapes, but in others it can work. Um, we do have a few. Um, the area at uh, what we call the Elm Circle, uh, at the Urban Arboretum across from Rose Ward. You just walk through to the other side. On either side of the pathway are two heirloom apple varieties that were planted uh, two years ago through an effort with another nonprofit called the Boston Tree Party. Uh, we'll play on words there. Their effort is uh, throughout the city of Boston. They're using public space, schools, uh, community gardens, um, public pieces of property land to introduce heirloom apple varieties that were um, that people were you know, using for, for fruit production um, hundreds of years ago in this area. And we have two of those. And, uh, we were Do they have any apples? They will soon. Um, they are, they're on a very um, uh, good effort that this Boston Tree Party is, is working to you know, publicly educate um, all the people who receive these trees. What they want to do is create an orchard throughout the city uh, of all these heirloom apple varieties. And um, they hope that uh, in seven to eight years, you know, they'll be bearing a, a reasonable amount of fruit yield um, to where they can, uh, the public can enjoy the fruit. Um, they'll be 
opportunities and you know, gather all the fruit and recite your pressing and stuff like that. So uh, kind of neat. So we do have a, a few fruit trees. Um, and you go further south, Gibby Square, Edible Demonstration Garden. Um, we've got some fruit down there. Um, the other, I'll talk about the trees all the time, but the other serious issue, you know, was, was the homeless. Um, and it was, you know, how does the plant material allow for homeless activity or, you know, what can you do to um, control that issue um, that was brought up was that the, you know, some of the dense plantings in the Harbor Fog area made it feel a little unsafe at night um, to people passing through that area. Uh, so we talked about that. We did say that whenever possible in an urban park, we're trying to show people um, what a tree would look like in its true form. Um, but many of these trees have descending branches, um, so you can't really have both because we're trying to, you know, have openness and, and sight lines and everything. So sometimes we have to, you know, artificially <coughs> change the look of the tree, raise it up, so to speak, a little bit to, uh, to get away from um, dangerous areas. But you know, the density of the plant um, was something that, the, that we talked about. Um, as Bob mentioned, you know, our staff passive enforcement of all the rules on the uh, of the Greenwood um, is something that's expressed to our staff. Uh, um, please call, you know, call 911, call another staff person to uh, help uh, you know, with, with the situation and stuff. So um, we, we recognize that we deal with it daily. Um, well, for us, I think it's hard for us. Um, questions? We obviously are, are running along. So yeah, we have to leave, and that hunt is, is no more challenge for writing it up. Um, so there will be other ways to hear the summary. Thank you. Um, so we have a lot of good suggestions for uh, programs. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, we don't do a lot of programming ourselves, but we work with a number of partners to bring uh, a variety of programs to the Greenway. Uh, some suggestions were uh, dance, uh, you know, just multiple forums, demos, classes. I talked about some of the uh, the Morris dancers. We have a, we're in touch with the Morris dancers in Boston. I think we had five several Morris dancer uh, demonstrations on Greenway last year. But people like about ballet and others. People would like about mark, different forms of martial art demonstrations or classes. Uh, somebody talked about the Zoomobile that used to exist, but the Frank I want that. Um, with uh, animal demonstrations, animal education. Uh, a lot of folks talked about. Um, the need for more uh, arts and crafts kind of demonstration type stuff. We talked a little bit about figment and what that does, but people had a real interest in kind of like exhibits, uh, photo day, that sort of thing. Uh, talked a lot about signage, uh, and folks expressed uh, uh, the need to see more signage about events, especially on event days. From if, like if we're having a, a, a pres uh, an event in uh, the Wharf District Park, having them kind of do it all the way up. I've done some of that. It is, a, it is a kind of challenge. Um, uh, for the food truck program, we talked about trash and recycling and the uh, non-appearance of our vendor on that day. Uh, and uh, then uh, a few other suggestions for um, that, uh, activities, uh, poetry, performance. We talked about winter programming specifically. Uh, Jonathan uh, from Boston Bird talked about their composed uh, skating rink and some community improvement doing. Talked a lot about first night. We are going to have the carousel open on first night. We talked a lot about collaborative programming between a lot of the other winter events that start happening in, in November and that's interest of ours. Uh, and we also talked a little bit about food and whether there is a desire for a more permanent kind of food concession, like a food kiosk. Uh, and we also talked a lot about uh, adjacent food and beverage providers, maybe doing business on the Greenway is sort of way we can work that into our food process. So that is really quickly it. I just make one suggestion. Sure. Um, because we were talking about signage, and not everybody knows that you can get those weekly emails about all the events on the Greenwood. So, a suggestion would be every time the Conservancy has any kind of meeting, and if you announce that to people so that they can you know, sign up for those, because those are very important. A lot of people say she had no idea what's going on, and we might not know about that. Um, I happen to get those, and I love it because then I know what's, what's going on. And yeah, how many Just don't you're going to have to file for the celebrity series? Uh, so Jerry's referring to uh, celebrity series for the 70th anniversary. He's going to put out 75 pianos in late September, early October uh, uh, around Boston. We're probably going to have between three and five on the Greenway. And these will be open to the public. Anybody can play them. They'll be decorated by artists. 
There's a hardworking piano tuner that actually went to uh, the North Bennett Street School to learn piano building that's actually doing it. Uh, and we have worked out a deal uh, with MassDOT to store about 40 in, uh, in our space in Parcel 7. Uh, so uh, we're now being um, getting piano donations. So I never thought, businesses, I never thought I'd be in one of those piano <laughs> donations, but you know, that's the way it goes. But it'll be a really fun event. And uh, the Celebrity Series is really coordinating the whole uh, actually, they're all going to be in public spaces. Um, but they're going to have people like we volunteer to, to run out with a cover one for right. our piano. For right. Whatever the piano is there. Yeah, it's, it, the, the effort is called Putting on Yours. It was developed by a British artist named Luke Jerome a number of years ago. They've done it in about 35 cities. Uh, the last city I lived in, in Austin, we did it in a number of parks. Uh, so when it came when it came up, we, we jumped at the chance. So a lot of fun. Coming later this, this later this fall. There's not many more, and I'll be brief, and luckily there's a fair amount of uh, overlap on um, issues. Um, we talked about the promenade itself and the edge that's bordering the city side and the need for more of a landscape buffer along that. When you're in the benches or visually you're walking up and down the promenade, you're really right too up close to the traffic, and the, the low planted material um, really doesn't provide enough of a buffer, and there's ways to explore. We're going to have, with the Carousel Project, we are expanding that. Um, edge treatment, which goes all, all four parcels, and we'll have a sense of um, what costs are involved and how um, dramatic the impact will be by widening it and adding all that material. Um, the question was about the, the kind of the orphan piece of land that is not on the greenway technically, but it's right, um, it's on the quarter on the water side, which is just above Pasta Beach, um, and it's alongside Harbor Towers at the, at the south end of that site. It's a pretty decent hunk of land that it's not clear who owns it and uh, who's taking care of it, and that there's a potential for it to be um, better or a really enhancement for the public than it is now. So, yes, um, Mass Stock owns it, and it's just a sort of they don't the right to take care of person, it. but I mean, there is a plan that Hot Towers has now, it's encompassed in their new landscaping plan. I they went over it with well, that's not that's not a done deal yet. Well, but we're willing to participate in the okay. as well. Okay, it's so just flagging it as an issue that there could be, it could be yeah. a better use of that space. Um, signage, same that we heard, uh, no bicycle signing, wanting that to be more of a prominent, uh, understanding not wanting to have a forest of signs out there, um, but also more directional signage. Uh, people were saying that a lot of people when you're standing uh, uh, have a block in the aquarium, um, people don't know where that is. Uh, we talked about one internal concept we had about sort of the, the sign on the stick with the directional areas, areas that sort of could be a, a sculpture of fun, kind of a whimsical thing where you've got an aquarium this way, the, you know, North End Hanover Street that way, City Hall, Tokyo, um, so something that would be kind of fun, maybe some strategic locations, and possibly the people that are on that sign could um, help underwrite the cost because it would be to their benefit too. Uh, People would like to see Botanica coming back on Parcel 18 and yeah. miss it a lot. Um, ice rink, there's one that's going to be tried out on, on, in the Rosewood Plaza, and that could be in terms of activation, maybe thinking about how that works, how successful. My understanding is going to be pretty small, and if there's an option to maybe do something like that, maybe like um, a related and kind of quick exploring very early on, um, maybe in the new square area, but it's just um, was raised as maybe that's kind of a fun use that's not there that they really like. And lastly, in terms of, um, there doesn't seem to be any designated areas that are particularly um, appealing to children, and um, one thought was on parcel 17, um, which is the one, does everyone know what parcel yeah. 17 is? Probably not. It's, um, it's one of the ones um, uh, just north of Rose Wharf, sort of where Harbor Towers is, and it's um, one that's it's a wider lawn area, and then it narrows up towards the northern end, and then there's a space along there that could maybe have some sort of, um, sort of sculpture treatment that, that you're a little bit more tucked in there that kids would like. Uh, I think just what we said is, from a, in terms of a designated children's playground, um, that's a tripwire for uh, fencing and age-specific areas by code, and so that ends up being a much bigger production, and the parks really aren't quite large enough to do that in a fenced area, but maybe a gesture like fun sculpture where kids would particularly like it could be changed out might be a way to, um, to appeal more to little kids. That's it.
thank you. Thank you to all of you who stuck around. Um, it took me patience to be late and the interest um, in hearing every last idea. Um, I, I put this up before in, in part because of Donna's suggestion about some sign up. This doesn't specifically have sign up for our newsletter, but in addition to emailing us your thoughts and um, Twitter and Facebook, we have a, uh, a weekly or bi weekly, depending upon the, the time of year, newsletter. Um, and uh, we love your help with volunteering. We love your help overall. Um, so thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.